Now we're going to talk about chemical equations. Now if you found the previous video confusing because chemical formula is not the same thing as a maths formula, you'll probably get confused again where in this video a chemical equation is not the same thing as a maths equation. So let me show you what I mean. So what is a chemical equation? A chemical equation is a summary of the chemical reactions that we have. And this will include information about the ingredients that you start off with and the products, products that are made afterwards and their relative proportions. So, I mean, I'm using the words uh, ingredients and uh, uh, it's, not, it's not the chemistry terminology, but I think it gives you the idea. Let's look at an example. So if, in most textbooks, they'll give you a really boring example like A plus B gives you AB. Um, and what we're trying to show you here is that on the uh, left-hand side, whoops, pick that color, left-hand side, that's called the uh, reactants. Okay, uh, I got a reactant A and a reactant B. If I put those two together, according to the chemical equation, something will react, and then I should get a product, which is made of the combination of those two. So that is my products. And in the middle of the chemical equation is an arrow sign, okay? Not an equal sign, <laughs> uh, but it's an arrow sign. And this has a special meaning. It means uh, the stuff on the left, the reactants, uh, reacts to form the stuff on the right. Or uh, A plus B yields uh, the stuff on the right-hand side. So it's not the same thing as equals, okay? Just in the same way is that um, you can almost think of chemical equations as recipes, yeah? Uh, you got a cup of flour, a cup of milk, and one egg. You mix them all together, you fry it, and you get some pancakes. Is it is it right to say that the pancake the pancakes are exactly the same thing as a cup of flour and a milk and an egg? Are they exactly the same thing as each other? No, they they've changed form. So you can't use equal signs in a chemical equation. You have to use the arrow sign. It also tells you which direction the reaction will go. It's going to go from left to right. Sometimes you might write it the other way. Some special occasions have the arrows going both ways, but we're definitely not going to talk about that. That's very high level chemistry. Don't worry about it until we get to grade 11 chemistry or, or, or year 11 chemistry for that matter. So that's the basics of it. Let's look at an actual example. Uh, we got uh, methane, which is CH4 gas. If I combine that with oxygen, two parts oxygen might I add, I'll get carbon dioxide and water. So that tells me what the, uh, the reactants I need to, to pull this off and the relative proportions. Can you see how, again, where this, this number one is invisible? How many CH4 stuffs do I need? Well, there's actually a number one in front of it, but it's invisible. So what's the relative proportions here? Well, it's one part uh, methane gas, two parts oxygen gas, one part CO2 gas, and two parts uh, water vapor gas. So that tells you the ratios. So if I, wanna, if I really want to maximize every scrap of methane gas that I've got to work with to make the, the most uh, energy uh, uh, output as I can, I've got to make sure that I have twice as many oxygen uh, molecules as I have methane molecules. I can establish that ratio. Uh, and we've got a special name for this in chemistry. We call it stoichiometry these whole number ratios uh, in terms of uh, the chemical equations. But that's grade 11 and 12 chemistry. Don't worry about it for now. But that's what I mean by the proportions. In the previous example, where I talked about the pancakes. That would be one egg, one cup of flour, one uh, cup of milk. Okay, And that gives you maybe 20 or 30 pancakes. That tells you the proportions that you're going to need and work with. Let's look at a more complicated example. Uh, this one here, I've got magnesium. And now I've got some new notation I've introduced here. A proper chemical equation will have not only the symbols of all the reactants and products and their ratios, but also their physical states of matter. So um, if I try to do the pancake recipe, will it work if I have a frozen egg? No. Will it work if the egg is hard boiled? No. So it's important that you, when you're trying to pull it off, the, uh, trying to recreate a chemical reaction or, or recipe, that you need to have things in the right um, state of matter. So you need the egg in its liquid form, obviously. 
So it may not be obvious for more abstract stuff in chemistry. So to help us, we have the states of matter written next to them. So magnesium can be solid, liquid, or gas. And the uh, chemical equation here signifies that it has to be in solid state for this to work. Um, the next reactant species is hydrochloric acid. And there's two of them. Uh, and it's got AQ next to it. Now, AQ is the symbol for aqueous state, meaning that it is a dissolved uh, material in water. So it's, um, it's a solution. Uh, and these two things will react to form um, magnesium chloride, um, and that will be an aqueous solution as well, dissolved in water. And it'll also make some hydrogen, but it's in gas form. So straight away, I can see that I'm going to create a... Uh, I'm, I'm going to start with a, a metal and a, and a solution mixed together, and I should start to see some gas bubbles being formed because the hydrogen is in gas state. And that can be really important because you may be trying to build a big, large vessel to contain something or create a material, and if you have nowhere for gases to escape if they're being created, it's going to build up in pressure and maybe it's going to explode. So it's also really important to have these um, written down, not only for what you need to start off with, but also what are you going to create and how you might prepare for that in advance so something doesn't go catastrophically wrong. And that is the end of this uh, brief uh, How to Read Chemistry video series. I hope it's decoded and demystified a whole lot of the uh, symbols and terminology and lingo that you come across. And um, hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Uh, give me some feedback. I'd really appreciate it in the comments below or if you're in my classroom, please, you know, uh, let me know what you think. Hopefully that's made uh, a lot of things come together for you.